has to defend in a few questions. On a scale of 1 to 10, how many people did you murder? <laughs> Let's see, uh... Let's see where the judge wants to ask the murder defendant. This is unprecedented. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. It is... I... I thought we were... I thought after the first two cases we were we were going up. We were like being like, okay, things are going to start making more sense now, be less ridiculous. They're still gonna be like exaggerated and a little silly, because that's that's where we're going, but you know, there's just kinda like an overlining logic or no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Think again. Think again. Like I can't even continue this. this is the, the level of nonsense here, I, I, I can't suspend my disbelief. It's, I can't, I can't do it. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Have you been paying attention to your own murder trial? Yes. Well, do you have any opinion on uh, whether you murdered someone or not? Why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry. I can't say what it was. Mm. Your Honor, sir! Bailiff! We are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared! He isn't at the boat shop, either. W what What should I do? F find him, quickly! We cannot allow him to get away! Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared! A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow. The final day uh, uh, But it's... Suddenly four days are allowed now? This is already day three! What? Uh, <laughs> Alright, judge can also make up new rules. Prosecution can make up new rules. I think defense has kind of made up some new rules. We just, uh, just play these courtrooms by ear. We're, we're basically just playing Mao uh, to determine whether someone goes to, uh, to jail for the rest of their life. Uh, it's... I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just one more thing. I'm now a Columbo. I would do a Columbo impersonation if I had any idea what he sounded like. Greetings, spot spot. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. This judge is a sham! This whole courtroom's a sham! I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. 122. Yay, Nick! You did it! Yeah. 
Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile, just a little. Relax. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What, what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No. There's so little time left. I want to tell you, to get it off my chest, but... Hmm. I can't make up my mind. What is it about, Edgeworth? It's... a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. To be continued. Of course to be continued. With a, with a clock? <laughs> Probably. 2.11 p- wait. Was it like 2.0- I thought it was actually 2.11 last time, but maybe it's like 1.22 or something like that. Let's assume the time actually makes sense. 2.11 p.m. right in company law offices. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisles, so am I? S swooning? Me? Oh. Oh, yes. I... I do remember feeling faint. Right on. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Uh huh. Me? I, uh. Well. Maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on! I saved Edgeworth in there, dude! Edgy! You guys should be bowing before me, yeah! Bow before your hero! Woohoo! That was hot out there! Hot! I'm glad someone's happy about how this case is going. He seems too happy to care about anything I show him. Not even the badge! Is that the case, Tragedy? Alright, fair enough. So it wasn't uh, the third day of the trial? Okay. So, so one thing isn't uh, broken, it's just really long and drawn out. Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty, considering he actually was. <laughs> but seriously, Nick, that bookshop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? 
Nick? I don't know. But what I do know is I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Y yeah, you, Larry. Not me? But, but why you, Larry? I was expecting you to say why Larry, so that's why my pause was a little awkward there. Uh huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? Hmm. Enough with the silent treatment. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then, when he was nine years old. It's not like anyone changes from when they were nine, and I knew him for only a year. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait, was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. Listen to this music that we haven't heard before. They saved me, Miles and Larry. They saved me, and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. <laughs> now the music's like breaking because I pointed out that it was new music. What? Hey, hey, Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Uh, um, uh, sorry. I, I kind of forgot. Hmm. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. That's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the beginning of spring, fourth grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? You remember, Larry. Spring, fourth grade. A kid in my class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Huh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold, so I'd skipped P.E. that day. I was the only one not in class. So, they thought you did it? Yeah. The kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. I... I didn't do it. Guilty. He did it. Guilty. It was you! Give me my money back! You're such a meanie! No one play with him. Just admit you did it. You can't hide the truth. Tell us the truth. We're not gonna play with you anymore. Yeah, and no borrowing my eraser. You shouldn't be allowed in the relay race or in the committee. Give me back the 50 cents I loaned you. Hey, did you... Uh... Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Class executions. <laughs> Apologize to the class, Phoenix. I... I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad. I... I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went over to where the boy was sitting. That's when it happened. Objection! He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs! 
Miles? Oh, look at how dapper that little kid looks. Oh, it's his money. Oh, interesting. Defended him even when it was his money. Okay. It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. But, but Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. Why don't... Oh, is this, this is probably Larry, I guess. But he was out for the day? He said he was out for the day. So I don't know how Larry Brick is into this, but maybe he comes in later. Well, why don't you all just shut up? It was Larry, but... I'm like, how is he here when they already said he was God for the day? There's holes in your story, Phoenix! This is how it always is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. But it turns out I did actually do it. Miles and Larry are chumps. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were always friends for like another couple months anyway. Well, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well... I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So, I took it kind of personally, you see. When something smells, it's usually the butts. It was the day after the theft, fair enough. No, see, only Phoenix was out for P.E., Larry was out for the whole day, but, uh, apparently it was the day after, even though I don't think that was clarified, but... Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember, his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm gonna become a defense attorney like my dad. A famous defense attorney. Then, a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. Oh god, the music, like, being extra slow there, like, actually worked and added to it. Greetings, Vinesa! The DL6 incident? Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard, Edgewor heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts, just like his mentor, Von Karma. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty gu verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not like the edgy we used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he'd become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... that's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. 
Edgeworth believed in me, and I believed in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Apparently Butts doesn't know the real Edgeworth. <laughs> Screw that guy. Whoa, Nick. S so, is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't really remember saying I'd do it for free. Ah, uh, Nick. 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 We have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well may be. Do you... I mean, there's lots of conspiracies and uh, puppet strings being pulled here and stuff, but uh, now is not the time to assume it's dangerous to go against powerful people, when earlier you were completely oblivious to the power of Mr. Red, White, and Blue Corp blackmailing everybody. Now, now you're just like, well, we might die from, uh, from saving Edgeworth. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what he's getting at here. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. So what, what do we got left here? We still have the metal detector, apparently. We didn't actually clear out very much. We cleared out the uh, the second photo. And like three other things I don't remember. <laughs> Guess it wasn't important after all. Alright, let's, uh, let's go say hi to Grossberg, see what uh, he can tell us. December 27th, Grossberg Law Offices. He's out. Again. When does he work, anyway? Now, now. Don't be so harsh. Guess we'll need to come back later. You look as grim as always. <laughs> um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You... you don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In fourth grade? <laughs> the face is just like... I know what you're talking about, but I'm pretending I don't. That's, that's just what that face basically says. Lunch money? Oh. Oh, right. Yes. I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth, why did you decide to become a prosecutor, anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals. I'm sorry, Wright, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes. The man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. 
But what about the shot through the glass in the... Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. Look, we've learned defense attorneys are always right. So, you were the one that's wrong and your entire life's a lie. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. Oh man, I love I love when uh, when this emote makes sense outside of the uh, context of FTL. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yeni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. Because apparently lack of evidence meant someone was innocent instead of guilty back in the day. Hey, it's like mercenary. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher, and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So, he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But... but that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us accurately to determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He, he's right. Now's not the time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> it's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. N no kidding. What are you showing me this picture for? Uh, no reason. You know, I was impressed by your deduction in the trial today. Granted. You're at the end of your rope, but still. Nick, he noticed. <laughs> it was that case that changed my life. And tomorrow, on December 28th, its Statue of Limitations runs out. Tomorrow? Could that be a coincidence? But, even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never except the parts of it that were literally erased from my memory. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. N nick no! Th that's a photo of his father. Don't show him that. Yeah, I wanted to show him the, the, the hole in the window where a gunshot went through. Y you're right. Now probably isn't a good time to dredge up those memories. Unless it gives us more information on this current case, which it might. What is it? Um, <clears throat> uh, nothing. Huh? Sorry. 
I'm not sure I can help you with that. Police Department Criminal Affairs. Hmm. Looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. Gumshoe? He won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boat shop caretaker. He shouted something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Gourd Lake Park entrance. Hey, pal. Long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, huh? Now I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No prop, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean, the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now, I'm off to catch a criminal. Detective Gumshoe sure is... active today. No! One other thing. <coughs> no one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lotta was camping? The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lotta's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. But apparently we can still go, okay, through most stuff. <laughs> yeah, everyone, you gotta hate it when you snap your tie in half, you know, because that's pretty much a daily occurrence. Uh-huh. The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed, too. I guess Larry's been too busy f with that trial to show up for work. Guess Larry has today off. He was pretty happy about saving Mr. Edgeworth. True. We owe him big. This lake sure likes to cause problems, doesn't it? Uh-huh. I mean, everything that happened here turned out to be a lie. Gordy was a lie, and the charges against Mr. Edgeworth were all lies. I guess you're right. I mean, I'm glad the charges were all lies, but still. Trash can still empty? A trash can with no trash. That old caretaker got away. Yup. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ah, him! Oh no, wait, that's, that's, hold on. Yeah, I was, I was like, wait. Yeah, I, Phoenix is right. I, I, uh, I should definitely know that clearing of the throat. Ahem. I'd know that clearing of the throat anywhere. Naha! Hello! What might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Nah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg, this is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edward's trial ends tomorrow. Hmm, that, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Ho oh, ho! What do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here, anyway? Who knows? Hmm. 
<laughs> Still says this. Doesn't update it. The caretaker must have run for the hills, huh? Yeah, looks like it. He didn't seem like a bad person. Can we uh, go talk to, like, Polly or something? There's a forest here beyond these bushes. Nick, the forest! There's someone in there! You're right. There's a few policemen in there. They must be looking for the caretaker. Good luck. Grossberg's the murderer, probably. Nobody's home. Hello. Hello. Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello. Hello. I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello. Hello. Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't just kidnap her. But I love stealing things, Nick. Please, just this once. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great. Now the bird's going to hate me. Well, why don't we ask the bird some questions? Alright, can we uh, open this case now? That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight! Ah! Let's open it, Nick. Come on, maybe we can find something awesome to steal in there. I'm sure there isn't anybody in there. <laughs> Alright, uh, Phoenix is, is well aware of how much Maya wants to steal, so it's, it's good, it's good. Aw, but hey, he keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there, something we could steal, or use for evidence. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Ah, boring. Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth! I know that name! N -n -n Nick, why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm gonna read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is your time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice! This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. Too bad this evidence is now kind of ruined because I found it here myself and there's no proof that I didn't just make it up myself. But. It'll be good enough, because any evidence is real evidence unless proven otherwise. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know. But it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written the letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look. I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. 
It can be just any Miles Edgeworth. That's right. <laughs>